10 Hilarious Knockoff Products Nothing says capitalism, I mean America, like Starbucks coffee. The coffeehouse chain's been a global powerhouse since the 1980s and has sprouted locations all over the world. But this hasn't stopped a whole slew of imitators from riding Starbucks Coke tails and trying to make a quick buck. Check out China's Sunbucks Coffee, which uses the famous Starbucks logo design for its own selfish end. Stars Buck and Buck Star Coffee commit the exact same crime, as does USA Bucks Coffee, which we hear is in the running for a subtlety award. Starbucks has a long history of taking imitators to court, so you'd best think twice before opening that Snarbugs coffee joint. In 2014, Comedy Central's Nathan Fielder opened a Los Angeles coffee house called Dumb Starbucks Coffee. It caused quite a stir but was ultimately revealed to be a part of a television publicity stunt. The suits were not amused. They say imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, but there's not much that's flattering about these baffling toy knockoffs. Guaranteed to fall apart within a half an hour of opening, these future junk heap liners spread disappointment wherever they're found. Check out New Style Ninja Tortoise, a bastardization of the I Can't Believe It's Still Going Ninja Turtles franchise. We'd hate to see the poor kid who opens this sucker at Christmas. Gee, uh, thanks for listening to me for the last 11 months, Dad. New Style Ninja Tortoise is just what I wanted. There's also the Mighty Mutant Power Turtles, which is what you end up with when Power Rangers and Ninja Turtles drink too much wine together. The Star Wars franchise has some doozy knockoff toys too, including Laser Sword, which is like a lightsaber, only lamer and Star Knight, which appears to be Vader moonlighting as a camp scooter toting police officer. Very European. Finally, every unloved child should own Robert Cop 2. No, he's not Raymond's police officer brother from Everybody Loves Raymond, but he's just as surly. Everyone loves to indulge in their favorite confectionery item, but sometimes you just don't feel like paying those premium brand prices. You should, though, because most imitation brands just aren't very good. Ask anyone who's traveled to Southeast Asia. They usually taste like cardboard, and you've got a 70% chance of finding a syringe or band-aid when you reach into the packet. These knockoffs deserve points for creativity, though. I mean, M&M ripoffs called S&Ms. Now, that's a gateway candy. You've also got sour fritters, which, on account of sounding like an STD, are a whole lot less appetizing. Oreos imitators are Boreos and Cream Betweens, which ooze pun potential. Interestingly, Oreos themselves are knockoffs of the original sandwich biscuit, Hydrox. But Hydrox sounds like a water boss in a Zelda game and is unmarketable. Thus, Oreos wins. The J.H. Filbert Company had no idea what a phenomenon their hilariously named butter substitute, I can't believe it's not butter, would create. I Can't Believe It's Not was the pun of the 1990s. It was referenced in countless sitcoms and sounds like something Chandler would have riffed on. They even had Fabio in their commercials. Just stellar stuff, guys. Of course, the imitators soon took notice and along came the astonished English of unbelievable this is not butter. Forgiveness, please. ASDA's pun tabulous, you'd butter believe it. And Golden Soft's timid, unsure, could it be butter? Honorable mention also goes to what, not butter? And butter it's not. All around the world, small-scale beverage companies struggle in the sugary shadows of behemoths like the Coca-Cola company. What's the little guy to do? Well, shamelessly replicate brand likeness, of course. To give an idea of the sheer scope of these imitations, here's a list of international Mountain Dew knockoffs. There's Mountain Lightning, Mountain W, Mountain Rapids, Mountain Frost, Mountain Shoutin', Mountain Explosion, Mountain Lion, and Wild Mountain. Just reading them makes us feel like we've climbed a mountain. Here's a similar list for Dr. Pepper. You got Dr. Bob, Dr. Thunder, Dr. Skipper, Dr. Fine Soda, Dr. Perky, Dr. Snap, Dr. Perfect, Dr. Becker, Dr. Bold, and Dr. Wright. We're not sure any of these are real doctors. I certainly wouldn't want to confide in Dr. Thunder or Dr. Wright. Maybe Dr. Right now. Pepsi is also kind of a crap knockoff of Coke, but that one's up for debate. Invented in 1964, Sharpies are the number one permanent marker in the world. 
They're so iconic that their name has become synonymous with the product as a whole. They're what Hoovers are to vacuum cleaners and aspirin is to paracetamol. Skirples are Chinese knockoffs that replicate Sharpie packaging but will probably bleed ink all over the insides of your bag. Skirples. The name also sounds like an as yet unidentified STD. Other Sharpie imitators include the Super Richang, Goodwill Super Superstar, and Hangbao Super Stonian. Everyone wants to look cool when they're doubled over from a jog to the corner store or running from their neighbor's frighteningly aggressive miniature fox terrier. Sportswear companies know this. It's why they set such exorbitant prices. They want you to work hard for their goods. They want you to sweat. It's no wonder, then, that consumers turn to imitation brand wear like Adidas, Heike, Canoverse, and Fuma. Their prices are comparatively low and you can conveniently pick them up from your nearest black market. Sure, the quality leaves a lot to be desired, but who wants sneakers that last longer than two weeks, right? That's unnatural. Slap on that pimp hat, shameless reimagining of Puma, lace up those ball star classics, and help out the little guy. If you're struggling to remain motivated, remember the hikey motto, just do that thing you said you'd do. Copycat car design is a serious first world problem. It's also the root of many legal battles. Check out the Great Wall's Kula, which apes the slim, purely electric Renault Twizy, pretty much down to the last detail. And look, Attack of the Clones! The Bayek X424 gracefully borrows elements of Jeep's Wrangler and Cherokee without saying thank you. The pandemic continues with the Geely GE, which made its motor show debut in 2009. Lawyers at Rolls-Royce no doubt salivated when the Phantom aping GE was unveiled. GE replicates many of the Phantom's aesthetics, including its iconic upright grill. It was also set to retail for $220,000 less than its forerunner. Its striking likeness made it an attractive alternative for cheapskates. It could have really affected Rolls-Royce's sales if they'd let it slide. Fortunately, Rolls-Royce's big strong lawyers hit the case, and Geely was ordered to do a comprehensive redesign. Mockbusters are low-budget imitations of popular Hollywood films. Made by small studios, their release dates closely follow those of the films they're ripping off. This insidious strategy works particularly well with children's films. The filmmakers obviously hope to profit from parents' confusion. Some of these knockoffs are hilariously shameless. Atlantic Rim apes 2013's Pacific Rim. Apocalypse Z reimagines World War Z. And Transformers becomes Transmorphers. Kung Fu Panda? That's called Chop Kick Panda. Some bootlegs are hilariously bad, too. Who could forget such classics as Peppy Likes Tacos? There's a rich tradition of knockoff video games consoles dating back to the early success of the NES. Back then, video games were primarily for children, so it was easier for manufacturers to fool unsuspecting parents into buying their kids a brick gaming system. It's not all bad, though. Some of these consoles can play or emulate retro games, sometimes from multiple systems. In lieu of buying genuine retro systems, this can be a cheap and easy way to experience game libraries from past systems. Still, for the most part, this is just shameless money-grabbing. These knockoff systems show how crazy cash-ins can become when copyright laws aren't enforced.